What's going on there, guys? We back with another one. Uh, we got to continue this discussion that started, you know, well, it's been started, but, you know, really has taken a lot on a life of its own between Monica McNutt and Stephen A. Smith. Now, Monica went on Shannon Sharp show last night and, you know, she has some things to say. Uh, you know, her and Shannon were able to kind of laugh about what took place on TV um, yesterday. And it, I think it was smart for Shannon to bring her on because when you go to his show, you see the benefits of like being able to talk without having to go to commercial break when it gets heated or anything like that. You can just keep talking and you can talk through it. And, and so I really like that, you know, him having that platform, they were able to have that discussion rapid fire right like right after it took place on tv they was able to run right over there and talk about it Stephen they went on his uh podcast and he says some things that's kind of getting looked at in a weird way from many fans and jamel hill uh took notice of one thing that he said where Stephen a was talking about you know you hadn't heard of monica mcnutt before she was on there Chanae kind of took off on first take is what he's saying and you know, now he's helping Andrea Carter catapult her to that next level. What I will say for these women is um, he's not just picking people that don't have a resume. You know, these people, they were going to find their way in the media world at some point because they bring something to the table. Andrea um, played at a high level. Um, you know, all three of the people that I just named uh, played at a high level, but also he talked about Jamel Hill and others who – he had on there and and Jamel, you know, she didn't really like what Stephen A said as far as like he made her. That's that was what you know people felt he was saying, which it kind of sounded like to me too. So this is what Jamel said. FYI, I was doing first take before it was even called that. It was originally called Cold Pizza. And before Stephen A. Smith was a regular and then a permanent co-host of the show. Now, when SAS had his show, quite frankly, he had me on twice, I believe. It was a huge opportunity, one he did not have to extend. I'm just not sure what that has to do with the topic. But, hey, it ain't my debate. But the idea of making people is odd. So that's what Jamel Hill had to say. And I will say, you know, that it was a, a different turn that it took. I think what Stephen A. Smith is saying you know, I put you people in position, and I think he's feeling a lot of the backlash that's coming his way. So what he's saying is, I help put you in a position, and then you get on live TV and kind of go off script on me and embarrass me a little bit, you know. And, and he's dealt with that with Max and others. But, hey, man, when you go in them debate rooms, um, it's going to be – you can't really control what's said. And I think – that brings the authenticity back to TV. So now it's like, okay, well, Monica, you could say Monica not reading off a script right now. You know what I'm saying? You could say she's saying her real feelings, and that's big. But without further ado, we're going to get into this Carrie Champion. Man, she had a lot, a lot to say. Let's check it out. And you all said most of my male friends, a lot of my male friends have said that they feel like the women in the WNBA are jealous of Caitlin Clark. And I, and I take issue with that word jealous, and I'm gonna tell you why. I don't think, and let me just be really clear, Caitlin Clark did not ask for this attention. Caitlin Clark did not want this attention. Caitlin Clark, from what I can tell and what I can hear, it just wants to ball. She's a baller. She just wants to play basketball. She did not ask to be the megastar, but she is the mega star. People are looking to pay attention to Caitlin Clark. It makes perfect sense. I understand it. Yes, there may be some jealousy. Yes, there may be people who don't want to see her succeed and they feel like, guess what? I have been here since its inception. I've been holding down this league for so long, these last however many years. Why did she get all the attention? Sure, that's probably a thing, but that's not the overwhelming sentiment. And I want us to stop being so simple. When we discuss women's sports, and by we, when I say men, when you all discuss women's sports, don't make it just about women being jealous of other women. That is so simple and that's so unfair and that's not what we should be doing. It annoys me more than anything, I promise you. Because women can have other opinions outside of being jealous. 
which is why I want to hear more people like Shanae and Elle and, and Andrea and, and Monica and Carolyn Peck and LaChina and all of the other women who've been covering this sport. And, and by the way, it's not just the women. Ryan Rucco, shout out to Ryan Rucco and Rebecca, Lo, uh, Rebecca Lobo. They have been covering this sport and they know that there is a nuance here. For people like Charles Barkley to have such a big platform and say, oh, these women are petty and they're jealous, like that's, sim that's simple to me. That's super simple. I need you to go a little more deep than just jealous. Maybe they're resentful towards the WNBA. Maybe they feel like the WNBA did not do what they were supposed to do. Maybe that's it. Oh yeah, sure. Like maybe she's upset. I'm 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 at work and I want to make sure that <laughs> people can get their items. Sorry, but my point being is that there is so much more to this story than what you all are allowing to be told. Stop saying these women are jealous. Stop it. Let it be more than that. How about this? How about the women who actually are in the sport? Do you do you honestly? Let me ask you this. Let me pose this question to you. Do you think? And this is where people get, get caught up and get mixed up. Do you think that every single woman is mad at Caitlin Clark because she's getting paid? Do you think women are mad at Caitlin Clark? Could they be mad at Nike for giving her that deal? Could they be feeling some type of way? Could there be frustration as my girl Molly said today? Yes, of course. But you have to make it more than just that because there's too many new people. Hi, welcome new people who just started watching the WNBA. These newcomers, and I'm talking about analysts included, who just started watching the game just yesterday. I'm keeping it a buck. And FYI, FYI, I'm doing this segment tonight with Bob Costas. He's a legend in the game. Bob, is, Bob just told me five minutes ago. Bob Costas told me five minutes ago that guess what? He goes, I'm okay with saying I don't know everything about the WNBA. It wouldn't be smart for me to pretend like I know what's the real element happening here. It's okay to say you don't know. Instead of dumbing it down to every single woman is jealous of Caitlin Clark in the WNBA. Let me ask you a question. When a player like Kennedy does what she does to Caitlin Clark with that cheap shot, foul. That shot's not fair. What she did to her was disgusting. There wasn't a basketball play. There's no room for it. What she did to her was tacky. I don't, know, I don't approve of it. I think she, yes, upgraded to a flagrant one, should have been, should have been fined, all the things. But let me ask you this. In the NBA, when a player takes a cheap shot, does that define the entire NBA? I can think of some players who've done some really, really crappy things to other players, and you don't be like, oh, so-and-so, he jealous. And you don't say, oh, everybody in the NBA is jealous. There was that narrative around LeBron. I remember I thought everybody was jealous of LeBron. And every NBA player told me, ain't nobody jealous of LeBron. Ain't nobody jealous of LeBron. Well, that's just not true. They were. You fans who hate LeBron was like, no one's jealous of LeBron. But you guys want to simplify the women's game to jealousy. And, we sh and the women should be grateful for Caitlyn. Hey, by the way, Caitlyn Clark is growing this game. Everyone wants to see her play in the league. She is a mega star. She does have that it factor. She's the reason why interest is up. No fault of her own. She didn't ask for this. She just wants to hoop. So that's a separate issue. So stop conflating the two issues and suggesting that people are jealous of her success. That probably is there too, but the reality is there is more. You cannot welcome yourself to this new sport you just started to watch and then pretend like you know what it is. Bob Costas just said it. I don't know, I don't really know that much, but I know enough. And I know when I can say I don't know. I have yet to talk to any of my male colleagues today that said they just know enough. Now with that being said, when Angel Reese got grabbed by the neck and thrown to the ground, where was her enforcer? What were people saying about her? Did anybody go to her rescue? No, right? She said, I welcome it, because y'all welcome me to the league. I'm okay with that. Welcome. Welcome to the WNBA. That's what she said. That's what she said. 
And the reason why there is outrage, and I'm going to keep it a buck because it's black and it's white. The, the, the visual of a black woman being aggressive to a white woman will always be uncomfortable. It will always make people uncomfortable. Get over it. Get over it. Because it's happening in the WNBA. Get over it. All you new fans, get over it. These women have been playing aggressive since day one. Ask Candace Parker how they tried to jump her. The Detroit Shock tried to jump her. And Lisa Leslie got thrown to the ground by a man when she was playing. Get over it. It happens. Welcome to the league. Yes, you're going to make it about race. Yes, it'll be uncomfortable. But let's call a spade a spade. And stop making it about who's jealous of her. Yes, and. Yes, and they probably are. Not all of them, though. One player, one player, cheap shot, does not illustrate how everyone feels about her. Her beef with Angel Reese does not illustrate how people feel about her. When Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were going head to head, were you guys like, oh, it's so unfair. You guys weren't alive, obviously, neither was I. But I'm telling you, that couldn't have been the narrative. Now, could have been. It couldn't have been. CC talk trash. If you can't take it, get off again. Everybody, no one's, what are you talking about? Somebody just said on my thing, Caitlin Clark talk trash. If she, if she, did, if she get out the game, no one can shut up new fan shut up no one cares if she's trash talking that's a rite of passage we're talking about being simple these ladies came to ball and it's aggressive and it's hard and there's a transition period another thing that you guys aren't talking about from the time she left she caitlin clark left college to the nba draft to being in the league there was very little time to figure this shit out in real time she's figuring it out as is everyone else and because she's smaller, let's talk about other rookies who've been bullied, um, in your opinion. I'm going to use y'all words. Michael Jordan. Steph Curry had to get in the gym. He was too thin. Um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, I can go on and on and on. On and on and on. My man Chuck up here talking about you women are petty. I think LeBron may have said that too. Come on, man. Do us a favor. Can, can we be more than just being petty? Y'all love to pit women against women. And I'm not saying it's a sisterhood. What I'm saying is all of these women are competitive athletes and they were men, this would not be the narrative. If they were men, this would not be the narrative. Yes, we've heard men say other men are jealous, but it doesn't define an entire league. This league is just now getting its start in terms of everyone paying attention. And we're glad, thankful, appreciative, all the things. Welcome, thank you for watching new fans. But what you can't do, new fans, and that includes people that are my colleagues as well, is simply say that these women are jealous and that's why they come in for Caitlin Clark. I'm gonna need you to watch two, four, five, 20, 37 more games before you end on just that. It has to be more than just that. I'm not gonna let you mansplain women's sports to me when you've been telling me for years to get out the kitchen, to stay in the kitchen rather. When I cover sports and I talk sports, Inevitably, there's somebody right here saying, oh, you need to stay in the kitchen. I'm out the kitchen and I'm on the court, my G. And I don't want to hear you guys say anything else about these women being jealous. Is there something else? Is there something else? Yes, resentment. Yes, frustration. Or how about she's a rook and she's getting rook treatment. I've been a rookie. I've been a rookie at my job. You've been a rookie at your job. And the OGs don't fool with you like that till you can show what you're worth. It's a rite of passage, and I'm sure CC does it, as you guys have been calling Caitlin Clark, have a problem with that rite of passage. But I'd be damned on my watch if I'm going to let a bunch of men dumb down this sport to jealousy. Y'all going to have to give me some more hot takes. I need another hot take. It can't just be she's jealous or Angel Reese is jealous, or it has to be more. It has to be more. Let me think. Competitive? Let me think. Welcome to the WNBA? Let me think. We also matter? Let me think. I'm not mad at Caitlin. She didn't create this for herself. Let me think. 
but I am frustrated with the system that perpetuates this narrative. Let me think. Nope, that's it. That's all I got. Shout out to my girl, Chanae, who said to Perk earlier, Perk, I come to you when I wanna know some things about the NBA. And by things, she meant background. I assume she meant, give me the background on this player before I go on TV with this hot ass take. Tell me, did you, did you play with him? Did you know somebody who coached him? Give me some history. I doubt seriously if some of these people with these large platforms are doing that or getting some background on who these players are and where they come from and what they've been up to and why they feel away. Diana Taurasi tried to tell us, let me put my shoes on because I got to go. Diana Taurasi tried to tell us, she said quite simply, her transition ain't going to be easy. DT told us and y'all call her a hater. Y'all said she was being jealous. Y'all said she just didn't want to see Caitlyn win. She said college ball is different. And no, I'm not saying that because she's a white woman, she's winning. I am saying she has proven herself on the collegiate level. Now it's time to do it at the professional level. She deserves all her attention. She deserves all her accolades. She deserves, deserves all this shine. But y'all not going, y'all not going to excuse this all into one simple thing, which is we jealous. Now I can't do that. I'm smart. I got a vocabulary. You know a lot. I know y'all know a lot. It's 10.30. I'm hopping on CNN in a few minutes. Talk to y'all later. Man, so Kerry Champion had a lot to say to me and said she even talked to some of her male friends and they were saying that, you know, the girls in the WNBA are jealous. And I could, like, hearing Kerry talk, depending on who you're talking to, uh, the narrative of everybody being jealous, I don't necessarily buy into that. Like, everything, nothing can be a blanket statement. You can have some people that's comfortable with their self, that's genuinely happy uh, for Caitlin Clark because some of them are fine knowing that they help elevate the platform to have it set in place ready for her to come in and really you know play and display her talent and continue to lift the game so Caitlin is just doing more of what they were doing they've kept this platform afloat and you know it, there was a platform to come to right because we could go back and say like Cheryl Miller as great as she was best player ever um, didn't have a platform to come to and in the midst of uh, her staying in shape and playing with the men because I remember there was like a little conversation with Cheryl Miller as far as like does this girl belong in the NBA because she you know she's athletic she's way better than all the female players uh, should she be in the National Basketball Association um, but I say that to say there was no platform for her to go play at you know here in the states like that you know back then uh, she got her in the career in the injury uh back then before she could even display what she could do and so i think you know the women now they there was a platform in place for caitlin to, to bring what she done in iowa to this level and it is it's big right it, it, that contributing factor you you can't really define impact solely on money you could say okay the first players to play in the WNBA is just as important as anything Caitlin's doing even more you know just to get the league started and established to have some level of interest to even continue uh, to have seasons so that's what I'm saying like pioneers never get paid in anything um, but you know, they do set the foundation. And now Caitlin coming in, um, Angel Reese coming in, that dynamic they have there and elevating the game uh, as far as viewership, as far as viewership. Uh, because I, I don't know if none of them, either one will ever be the best player uh, in the league. Caitlin may have the best chance to do that. She's going to have to get a lot stronger. Um, you know, she can't be so predictable on that three-point shot where she's fading left, where she got to go fade left to do it, um, you know, get some more counters. But her passing and all that stuff, she's turning the ball over the high clip, but 
she does have the ability to pass the ball really well. Just figuring it out and the transition between college and pro isn't as long as like uh, the NBA where you get a whole summer league, all those preseason games, and then, you know, you go into the season. It's not that big or that long of a time, you know, after your college season to your pro season. Um, but as far as like all the women being jealous, um, again, it's a different thing at play here. We heard Monica say it last night on Shannon's show. You know, she made, she had a $28 million Nike deal. And it reminds me of LeBron, you know, coming into the NBA with a hundred million, you know, was it his, his uh, Nike deal with like $90 million just right out the gate. You know, let me give you this. And it was some people resentful to the fact that LeBron was a more physically dominant person. So he was able to stand on business, you know, his first year and, and play really well too. But, um, again, they looking for the next thing and, and they're looking for the thing to market to take their lead to the next level. And I think this time is pivotal. What is coming from this? I'm going to take a different like approach to this conversation today. What is happening really is the conversations that need to happen. You know, um, women, even though y'all like some people may be offended by how men are talking about the game, they talking about it. So don't get upset every time you hear something you don't agree with. This is a teachable moment or a moment for like y'all to, to say what you know about the game. No, this isn't what happened. This is actually what's going on. And I and Carrie, I think, articulated it pretty good. Um, you know, so yeah, it's a new thing. It, it's a phenomenon. So like Everybody's looking. Everybody has a think piece. Whether well-informed or ill-informed, people got think pieces. And the game needs that. But I do understand um, not wanting a certain narrative painted around the game where it's just about this one player versus all the other women. And you just watch this one player because now... People are in fear that if something happens to her or Caitlyn has a career in the injury, all the viewership just dies with it. And th and that's probably true right about now. You know, um, Chicago Sky Home Games will be watched, obviously, because they selling out. But by and large, you know, it, it's about Caitlyn. And it isn't about her being the best player right now. It's about her and her journey to trying to become one of the best players. People are so invested in that that they're watching to see each step until she reaches the upper echelon players uh, in the WNBA. Now, she got rookie of the month. Uh, some people feel like it should have been Cameron Brink. Some people feel like it should have been Angel Reese. But, nah, Caitlin, you know, she probably definitely deserves that. Um, I need to go see what Rakia Jackson's averaging, though, because Rakia, nice. Uh, I, I like her game a lot. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I really like that the conversation is happening though. I, I just, I guess from my viewpoint, I remember for a long time, I was like, man, I enjoy their games more than the men a lot of times, but nobody talking about it because it's competitive. It's fundamental. Um, they're not relying over on this overwhelming athleticism. So you're seeing the ball move. You ain't seeing the ball stick to nobody's hands. You're seeing more hit ahead passes, better screens being set, uh, boxing out on rebounds. You're seeing more technique use and just straight up fundamental skill sets and i've i've been enjoying it that's what i always say in my videos i've been enjoying it so many people though uh, haven't been tuning in and act like nothing's on it and for a long time tbt and the big three was kind of taking like okay it ain't no nba on we'll check this out and they kind of been taking that market uh, but I think the WNBA, I think the true test is going to come then, you know, just how um, sustainable the viewership is through those times, especially TBT when it gets down to the end, you know, for the um, million dollars. I think that's going to be something that we have to look forward to what happens when it's two other competitors, the big three and T TBT starts up. But I think, you know, from the women's perspective, what I would say to them is you, you just have to embrace Caitlyn by and large being 
the big mega star. She she is. I mean, for who who selected it, who chose it is kind of irrelevant right now. It is what it is, and everybody can capitalize off of it. That's what Stephen A was saying yesterday, and I kind of agree with Stephen A's point on that. You have to see the bigger picture in what you can capitalize on. Tear her head off when she's in front of you and be kind of marketable. You know what I'm saying? I know people were talking about the women that like each other and the women that, you know, have boyfriends or husbands and the different dynamic there. And I want to be honest with you, when it comes to men watching the game, they do love to see women that they feel like would be interested in them playing the game of basketball. They don't want to necessarily see the women that like women as much. Um, it's just a thing, right? That's why you see these football leagues where the girls have short skirts and stuff like that. And you see the men at the game. It's just a dynamic that exists. We can't act like that don't exist, you know, um, between men. For me personally, I watch it, you know, for the game. Um, have my kids watch it and be like, oh, you see how she set that screen? You see how she's moving off the ball? Like, I'm looking at it in that way, but some of the guys that I talk to or that I see, you know, they they just want to look at women like that. And that would lean back to the point Angel Reese was talking about, that she felt like she was S-U-alized. I'll say S-U-alized. Uh, you know, when she was in that press conference at LSU after losing to Iowa last year. And that's not necessarily right either. You know, when women feel that way, um, where they just feel like an object, you know. So I definitely get that too. I, I get that too. I just think the conversations we have right now are so important, man. I want to continue them. I, I'm Stephen A. Monica McNutt, go sit down, go have a conversation. Carrie Champion, Charles Barkley, have a conversation. You know, have a conversation about this. And because a lot of times when you just hear the think piece, oh, I can't believe he said that on TV. And then, you know, she responded like, who's she talking to? Why is she talking to me like that? And so it gets like that. Then you sit down in the room, you get to air some of that out. And then you start to see where the person coming from. The conversation most of the time starts to shift. You be like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I might not even agree with him, but okay, I, I see where his train of thoughts coming from. No, he won't trying to be funny. He won't trying to be weird. Just has a different perspective and a different way of looking at these sorts of things. So, um, yeah, man, it, it's a different time in the W, though, and I'm going to keep supporting it. We're going to keep covering these think pieces, but I'm definitely going to keep supporting it, man. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to next time. Peace. Skip tweeted something, and although I disagree with the tweet, uh, and, and uh, hopefully uh, Skip would take it down. No, I'm not going to take it down. Skip. 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 Skip, 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 skip.